Shalom. Welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dalmar, together with my co-host Mark Lawrence and statewide news service, jbiztechvilly.com. And now, as you can see, columnist for the Jewish press. Right. I have a column called Albany Beat, and it happens to be the latest column, has to, happens to be in this issue. And I uh, talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. But uh, speaking of government, uh, mm -hmm. our guest with us today is a longtime friend, uh, I won't say old, but longtime friend, Steve Aquario. He's the executive director, the head of the New York Association of Counties, NISAC. So welcome to The Jewish View. Well, thank you for having me. Thank it's you, Rabbi. It's a pleasure, pleasure to be here with both of you. You know, I think I knew you from the very start, from mm -hmm. when you started your career. We're about four years difference in age, and I think I was already at the Capitol when you started looking around for a job. <laughs> I think if we look back and remember what was happening there and look at today's government, uh, it's the same process, but uh, uh, a new economy emerging here in, uh, in Albany and uh, perhaps some, some different legislators, Mark, but many are still there. Some are, yes, you yeah, know, and some are, uh, I think Richard Gottfried is trying to become the longest tenured uh, assemblyman or legislator. Uh, to, to try to outdo uh, Markey, uh, John Markey, who was a senator. Sure. But, I, but I went back on, huh. my, uh, <laughs> on my archives, and I pulled out a program from 1988. Wow. <laughs> when Ed Crawford had your position. He was the Broome County, County executive, executive, yes. Before, and then he, became, and he was a terrific man, very, may he rest in peace, really terrific. But, you know, I, I look at the... Uh, workshops and I look at the issues that were going on back then and it's the same <laughs> a lot of it's the same issues about 80 percent of them are the same issues as today. Steve let's go to the basics what is the official um, duties or of the Association of Counties? Thank you Rabbi. Uh, New York counties are a little different than some of the counties across the nation. Uh, all states have counties uh, all well, uh, states. Louisiana has parishes. Parishes, they may go by the boroughs in New boroughs, York City. Okay. Correct, good observation, Mark. Right. Uh, counties, boroughs, parishes, uh, all states uh, have these divisions of Go local ahead. government. In our particular case, Rabbi, we're talking about a regional government. The county is a regional government. It covers uh, 57 regions of New York State and the five boroughs, as Mark mentioned, of New York City. That comprises the 62 counties of New York State. Our association is the collective voice, the spirit, if you will, of these local government, these regional local governments all across New York State. We aggregate the issues. We've been talking about them, as Mark mentioned, in 1988 to 2015 uh, to 2050. We've been here for 90 years. We're celebrating our 90 years of service to New York's county governments. Uh, largely, we deal in public policy and education. So uh, unlike uh, most of the parishes or counties across the nation, New York's counties are the administrative arm of state government, where we administer all federal programs and most state public assistance and health programs. So most counties across the United States do not do that. That's what makes us unique in New York as the administrative arm of state government and also serving our communities in a local function as well. Now, Association of Counties is the only place that you've ever worked coming right out of law school. I worked for a brief uh, stint uh, at the Civil Service Employees Association. You're right, but, but for yes, the most, part. most of my professional career, 90% uh, of it has been with, uh, with county counties. government, Association of Counties. So, you know, the, and you're quite proficient, I would say, in the municipal law. Well, that's what we do. You know, we, that's what we, you do. That's what so, I do. I practice municipal law and so when you, policy. Right. So when you, when you became, when you were general counsel of NYSEC, now you're executive director, did you have, to, were you able to do away and trim your uh, staff and not have a general counsel? Because... You're it? You could do both? Well, that was one thing, yes. I'm, I'm carrying both functions now. Uh, we were able to eliminate the general counsel position. I still do that function. Okay, we good. have another counsel in the office. 
I miss the law. I miss working mm -hmm. in the law more on a regular basis. And the job that I have now uh, tends to be in the political side of things and uh, more in a policy and politics, if you will, mm -hmm. as opposed to straight legal and law and reasonal mm -hmm. reasoning. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the political process produces an outcome that might not be the same outcome in a courtroom. Now there are people who say, what, you know, county government, you know, other, you have village, you have towns, you have state. They, you know, county is just something that's sort of amorphous, right, in the middle that maybe we don't need. You can get away with county, you could do away with county government. That would really trim the, si the, the, the tax levy. But when I looked at all the levels of what the counties do, I mean, it's not just the jails, it's not just social services, it's not just the health department. It's a lot, there's a whole lot more to what county government does that yeah. most people really don't r recognize and they don't realize how important county government is. Well, that's an excellent observation. Uh, it's an often misunderstood unit of government, uh, often appearing invisible uh, to uh, folks in New York, uh, our regular citizenry. Uh, living in, in New York State, um, if you are interacting with the county, you're often in need of assistance, uh, public assistance, Medicaid, poor, uh, job training, uh, dislocated uh, worker losing your job, uh, mental health counseling, mental um, health services are provided. Um, the counties, or you're encountering us through uh, law enforcement. Um, we operate the jails, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. We prosecute. We also provide indigent defense. So if you need a lawyer, if you don't have any resources, one shall be provided for you. That's the counties providing that service. Right. Prosecution, defense. We also build all the courthouses in New York State for the state Supreme Court, the county court. What do you mean you build? We are responsible for the construction of the courthouse. The Association of Counties? The, the, county, well, no, the, the county counties government. themselves. County governments. County governments, county governments, yeah. county governments themselves. They bond that. We yeah. have to build these, costs yeah. quite a bit of money, and the, the judges will use these facilities to administer justice in New York State. Uh, it is a, uh, a far-reaching and encompassing unit of government providing the regional services. Well, when a state, let's say a state Supreme Court judge needs to use the county courthouse, couldn't the county build the state for having that office space and needing that, office, that space? We are responsible for the capital expenditures for all the state judges and the county judges. So state judges are using courthouses financed by local taxpayers. Is that an unfunded mandate? Yes, that is an unfunded mandate. How many other unfunded mandates are there? Well, we like to refer to about nine of them. If you just look about nine, how many are there? Probably three dozen or okay. so, 36, 40 unfunded mandates. Mm -hmm. But if we just look at one of them, the largest of them Medicaid. all, Medicaid, mm -hmm. uh, that consumes uh, uh, $8 billion of the local tax levy going to pay for Albany's programs. And Mark, that's what's causing pressure in our communities right now. If you're in Jamestown, New York, or, or Buffalo, or Montauk on Long Island, or the North Country, or right here where we sit in the Capital District, county governments are struggling to serve their residents with community-based programs uh, for our elderly, our veterans, uh, community-based programs. There's a property tax cap in New York State right now putting pressure on mm -hmm. uh, the local government's ability to generate revenue. Except We Albany have to pay for state programs and services first. Yeah, but Albany County's doing much, very well in terms of the, with the cap, and even though they had the problem with the nursing home. And now they got out of that problem with, the, with funding the nursing home, and they're able to keep well below the tax cap. Well, if we look in Albany County, they have done a wonderful job of addressing their nursing home and redesigning and bringing in some new programs and services up in the nursing home and be able to keep that home. Many counties were not able to do that and had to privatize that, that important governmental function. Yeah. We used to have 44 counties with county nursing facilities. That number has been cut in half. We are less than 20 right now, and that number will probably be cut in another half within a few short years mm. as counties have to get rid of providing this important service for their community and their constituency because they simply can't afford to do it because of these state mandates. So there are about nine of them that consume about 90 percent of the county's total property tax collection. When you say nine of them, you mean the nine unfunded mandates. Unfunded state right. mandates. And it goes the other way, Mark. 
I've heard the other way that you have, for example, we know Albany County, but I'm sure it's in every county in New York State, is that there's police and fire departments in every little little town, and if they would just maybe put into a county, you know, the county sheriffs, or, you know, put the police, and you need a, a dispatcher for every fire department for every little town, maybe that would save money, if maybe giving more power to the county, more government to the county, that would save the cities at least a little bit more money. Rabbi, that is an excellent point, and we have been seeing that. We and one you probably seen... like more than what I proposed about doing away with the counties that well, I talked I, about. So you probably like Rabbi's point a lot Well, better. I certainly support all <laughs> levels of local government. They're all very important. But the Rabbi raises a very good point, an interesting point for our viewers, and that is uh, regionalization. Where can we share services and save our taxpayers money? Mm -hmm. uh, emergency dispatch is an area that we are seeing the towns, cities, and villages, each with their own police forces, looking more towards the regional government, the counties, to help with dispatching emergency services. So technology is allowing us to do this. It's getting better and better, and we are moving in that direction of more shared services, especially in public safety. Do you ever... I mean, I, I know that when you first started, you had a full head of hair. And, I did. You know, now you have, and you just decided to just take it all off. I did, yes. <laughs> you know, where, uh, where, when you see that these programs have been going on, the, the same cry that you've had mm -hmm. over year after year after year for decades, and it's this, you know, I get tired of covering it. I've been covering the Association of Counties as a reporter for 30 plus years. I mean, I just get bored listening to the same old cries from these county executives and then hearing the state leaders at your conference, you know, they get up and they tell you, pablum, they feed you pablum, they feed you what you want to hear. Oh, yeah, we know what you want. Oh, yeah, we're going to try to do try to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. And do you just eat it up or do you not believe them anymore? Or, I mean, do you just knock your head against the wall and say, look, this is ridiculous? already? I mean, you know, just stop lying to us or, you know, just get it done. If you're going to get it done, just get it done already. I mean, you know. Well, you raise uh, uh, a, tough, uh, a tough point to deal with. How do you get up in the morning and go to work? Uh, these, um, these county governments, these regional governments are important units of government. All levels of government yeah. in our country are important. If you look at it as a cake, Mm -hmm. Oh, a cake. You have the cake itself being the states, the states, the That's state right. of New York. You have the frosting on top. That's right. Being the federal government. It's all kosher, by the way. And kosher, of course. That's right. And the swirl in between. Right. You would have to get that in. Right. The swirl in between or the marbling is the local governments. Which unit of government is more important? Right. Well, you can't really say the federal government or the state government or local governments. Each unit of government provides an important function for the people of America. Local governments in New York State, the counties, uh, ever since the 1950s, 1960s, when they shifted the cost of Medicaid onto the local tax roll, Governor Rockefeller, and then he shifted uh, indigent defense, the, the lawyers for the poor, onto the counties. Mm -hmm. These two programs alone are almost uh, $9 billion today on the local tax base. Uh, it has to change. We can't continue to go down year after year removing the ability of Dan McCoy, the Albany County Executive, or the Albany County Legislature from providing for their citizens mm -hmm. and doing things that the government closest to the people wants to do but can't do because their entire collection of revenue will go towards state federal programs. Mm -hmm. Something has to give at some point in time. We can't stop bringing this to the attention of state leaders. That's what we do. We're elected at the local level. These county officials are elected to serve the constituency, uphold the constitution of the state of New York and the laws of the state of New York. So they have to follow these laws. But we have to bring the concerns, the regional government concerns to the state and ask them to act. Now, to his credit, Governor Cuomo has taken some steps to address this issue. Well, he likes you. Because he put you in his State of the State video, yep. or State Budget video, one of the two. That was very kind of him. He, he did single me yeah, out. He did. He, he put did. your face up there with yeah. a cutout. Yes. He did. 
<laughs> he does have uh, a sense of humor, that's for sure. Uh, he but of is, all the lobbyists, of all the advocates, I mean, he picked on you. <laughs> he did. He, he singled me out. His father uh, used to pick on me. So did he? Yeah, so have that, the, we've got yes. something more in common <laughs> that's there, right. Mark. Uh, but I think that we have to give credit to this New York governor who's taking some steps to address these issues that we've raised. We've yeah. been complaining about Medicaid costs at the local level. Right. He did something about it. We were complaining about lots of things. He's doing things about it. But the point to the governor is you can't just do one thing and move on. You have to continue to address these regional needs of the communities. It's a mosaic. It's a mosaic. <laughs> he says, I like to complain a lot. But it's a mosaic, it's a work of art and <laughs> progress, right. and you have to keep building on the momentum and making it a better place. We're New Yorkers, we want what's best for our state, for our communities, and certainly for our people. Now, part of what you're referring to when you said he did something about the Medicaid redesign team is what you were a part of. And, yes. And that's what you're referring to when you said he did something about Medicaid. Our costs at the local so, level were growing by 10 percent. How plus. much? How much of an impact did you have on that team, mm -hmm. Medicaid the redesign team? That was probably what 25, 30 people. And how much of an impact did you have when you spoke up and did and you saw what the final outcome was? Uh, well, final uh, report. I was the only representative of the taxpayer no. on that on that. Uh, uh, panel. That, that, that panel, that, yeah. that multi-billion dollar panel. And I continue to serve in a Medicaid redesign capacity for the state to help bring the message of the government that's administering the program. Unlike other states, New York's counties are administering this Medicaid program, this federal program, through our social services departments. Mm -hmm. We bring that regional perspective. So I feel I brought a lot of color to that discussion, uh, to that Medicaid redesign team. The viewpoint of the taxpayer, the local tax base who's paying for it, these changing that they're making, these changes that they were proposing and making, how did we feel about that from the regional level? And I think it was a largely successful effort. It led to billions of dollars being uh, taken off of the local tax roll and having the state assume that and bring about efficiencies. We're reasonable local government officials. We don't advocate for just shifting costs back to the state. But if the state is managing this program and they can change the laws and policies to save money, it's a win-win. It's a win for the patient, a win for the taxpayer, and a win for local governments. All right. How powerful is it for you when you have a state official who becomes a county executive, like Marcus Molinero, and does he whisper dirty little secrets in your ear about, oh, this is what they're saying about you behind closed doors in the conference, even though he was in the Assembly Republican mm -hmm. Conference, which is the minority of the minority. But I just you know, thought that you know, are there, maybe there were other uh, former state legislators who became county executives, and they could tell you, hey, this is the better way to approach it if you only did it this way, and then you're getting it you know, the reverse, you know, coming back at you. Pat Halpin, I think, was another example, maybe. Well, wasn't he? Uh, I Suffolk don't think County? Pat Halpin was. He uh, wasn't a I don't assembly? think he no. was in the state legislature. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mark Molinaro is the only serving uh, uh, state yeah. legislator who became a county executive currently, presently. Right, right. right. Uh, he does bring that perspective uh, to the discussion. So, what does he dialogue. tell you? <laughs> well, he tells us that, uh, that you have to. Uh, um, resonate with the Assembly Caucus. If we look at where the Assembly Caucus and the state government is from, they're from New York City. Uh, why does New York City care about Albany? Why does New York City care about Syracuse, Buffalo, Rochester? So we have to try to resonate with the New York City legislators in the Assembly, the People's House, and also in the Senate, which is represented presently of an upstate point of view, uh, to sort of change that view over there. You have to balance both houses between the Senate, more representative of up upstate needs, and the Assembly, um, uh, yeah. more uh, representative of New York City's needs. But in your makeup of your association, you have the city of New York as one entity. Yes, and we you do. Don't, and you don't have each borough. Wouldn't it be easier? Well, isn't or, every uh, borough a different county? County, it is, and that's why I'm bringing this up mm -hmm. to him. Well, they, they consolidated he, the functions of that into a more of a metro government 
uh, to comprise the city administration through the office of the mayor. But the borough presidents, presidents themselves yeah. are always welcome to participate through the process. But their powers have been changed mm -hmm. through the city charter yeah. and delegated to the mayor. Yeah, they're basically cheerleaders for their well, individual counties. Well, I wouldn't counties. call them cheerleaders. They're important community advocates and have important functions okay. within the city. They're, they're Marty Markowitz was this cheerleader. Yes, well, he is. Now, there's an example yeah, of a state legislator who became that's right. uh, a county leader. A county leader. Right. But, Mark, the, um, uh, we appreciate the uh, expertise of the state official coming now to the regional government and to see what we've been talking about all those years Okay. As he listened to the concerns but, but and you the have, complaining. But you have Ruben Diaz Jr., mm -hmm. who was a former... Another borough leader. Right. And you have Melinda Katz, Katz. as Queens. She yes. was an assemblywoman. Yes. You know, so you have... You know, but you don't, state, But right. you don't consider them, in your mindset, in the association, New York City, individ, you know, the individual leads. In other words, I never... I, I just see... Uh, Sheriff Solomon in, is in, the lobbyist for the city. In Medicaid city, policy you know, so. or in the implementation of public assistance programs, food stamps, or preschool special education, the mandated programs that the association spends most of their time on in these, these public policy areas, we would coordinate and work through the mayor's office and those departments in city government mm -hmm. and not the borough le leaders themselves. But why don't you go to the borough leaders to go to the mayor and talk? We you have. Know, you we have. have. Okay. We have so with them. did you say to the uh, Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, who's a former state senator, did you say to him? There's another one. Uh, that's right. Did you say to him, show me the money and let's get, you know. When he was a uh, state well, senator, I, I believe it. He was a senator, wasn't he? Was he was a state senator. Yeah, state senator, I did. But when he has become a regional borough president, yeah. I've not done a good enough job of going down there okay. and spending some time with the five borough presidents. I've communicated with three of them, yeah. but I need to do a better job of spending more time in those, yeah. in those boroughs. You're absolutely right. Bring the message. And you have a county... They have the same yeah. function in New York City as they do in Albany County. The mayor is largely a county executive. Same function right. as Albany County Dan McCoy would have. Uh -huh. uh, mayor de Blasio serves yeah. in that same capacity. You know, and Audrey Pfeffer, a former assemblywoman from Queens, is the Queens County clerk now. So here you have another right. a county official who's you know, from the, formerly from the state legislature, from the majority side. So right. maybe they could tell, and former Hel Helen Marshall used to be an assemblywoman. She was the former Queensboro president. I mean, you could bring these people to your conference, and you could tell, have them tell the association what's going on behind the scenes, the little dirty secrets that are going on, to spill the beans to say, hey, look, this, you know, they're saying you don't matter, or they're saying the, the conference of mayors matters, yeah. or the association of towns matter more. Or something, you know. I know that every level of government is important, but you know, at least you can get that inside feedback. You raise an excellent point, and I think that we need to continue to build a bridge between New York City and upstate New York. It is one state. The needs are uh, a little different uh, geographically, regional, but the programs are the same. Mm -hmm. And if we could tap into the expertise and political sense you might these be more successful yes that these officials have down there we could be more glad successful. i could help and thank you very much <laughs> just to get these tips just, <laughs> no it's it's an excellent observation and you have an excellent memory of the state legislators who have moved into oh different yeah positions. don't don't get me started <laughs> list of, i have more lists than you can imagine but you know i would hope that uh you know s some of these here th this is a pamphlet you can have uh, from 1980s, uh, maybe you can look at that's yellowing already, <laughs> and that maybe that might help you in terms of your advocacy and figuring out, you know, why are we promoting more effective local government? Well, that could be your mantra now too. Absolutely, and you know, but you got to change things up, I guess, every you do. so often. But we, you do. You, you really don't to. need to create new. You just got to change the date. You don't really need to create new. Pro, uh, but we have had material um, <laughs> many success points, success stories, in all those categories of preschool, special education, or judiciary, 
or uh, infrastructure funding. The state has responded. The state does respect the local governments. And I believe this governor understands the role that these local governments have in, in his state, in our state. Mm -hmm. We all have an important function, and that is to serve the people of New York. Where do you think that comes from with this governor? Do you think he'd be, he was at the... Uh, uh, you know, at the hip of his father when his father just became, was uh, in the beginning of his father's administration? Do you think he learned something back in 81, 82, 83, whatever, you know? I don't know where his philosophy comes. I do think he's a scholar of government like his father was. Yeah. He perhaps learned the philosophy of government uh, through his father and understanding of the role of government. Uh, he has evolved into his own man, into his own way of thinking. Um, I wish he would change his thinking a little bit about local government and its role. He believes there's too much local government in New York State. Um, but I also think that he has tremendous respect for the role of the county governments, what they do for the state, his administration, how he's helping the people of New York, its role in the economy. He realizes that counties have a tremendous role in attracting jobs and businesses and helping move the economy of the state. Well, when you talk about too much local government, do you, are you of the opinion that, there's, that there could never be too much local government? Well, that's, that's uh, a tough question. Uh, of course. Uh, I'm doing that all, all half hour. Yeah, no. yes. <laughs> You're challenging some very uh, good questions to me. Uh, I think it's up to the people. I think it's up to the people to decide that. If the people want to change their government, they should petition the government to do that. Okay. And that is by referendum. If you want to uh, uh, dissolve a village or consolidate a village with a town mm -hmm. or create a village. That's the beauty of democracy right. uh, in, in, uh, in New York State. Now, we don't have initiative and referendum right. like California does. And I think that's a sensible thing for our state. I don't necessarily think that initiative and referendum is the right way to go in New York State. And I think our, our founding fathers and mothers, as they've evolved our Constitution over time, uh, have concluded that as well. Now, we do have a constitutional convention question, yes. Mark and Rabbi, that will come before the voters in a few short years. Mm -hmm. Shall the state have a constitutional convention? I think they should. Should they? I do, too. I think it's about Usually time. it's voted I like 70% down. It's voted down. Really. Now, I do, too. I share your views as well, Mark. I think we should examine the Constitution. I think it's a good thing to talk about it, at least. And if they want to make changes, wonderful. If they don't want to make changes, wonderful. But at least we have told the people of New York we're going to look at this Constitution on your behalf. Okay, so is, are you of the opinion that there is never too much local government? I think that in our particular case, I represent the 62 counties, and I think that number is just right. I do not think we need a Peconic County created. I would not like to see Delaware secede into Pennsylvania, which some folks are talking about, and lose a county in New York. I think we have an appropriate number of county governments in New York State. Well, the, the we have 1,100 or, or so, 12. Uh, 100 uh, units of local government in New York State. We have, to, we have to distinguish, Mark and Rabbi, what are we talking about here when we're talking about 10,000 units of mm -hmm, government? Mm -hmm. That would come across as a number to be way too high. Well, you're talking but about we water at, districts, you're right. talking about fire districts, so, you're talking exactly. about library districts, Correct. you're talking about very... I am yeah. only familiar with and work with the general purpose local governments, our towns, cities, counties, and villages. Okay. Those are the units of, units of government that I work with and am most familiar with, and I think that number is appropriate. Now, the, I got to tell you this little bit of trivia. Back in the 80s, I think it was, there were the uh, counties that make up the Adirondacks uh, wanted to secede to Vermont and call it Vermondack. Oh, gosh. And there was a real proposal to call it, to rename both state, you know, both areas, and and I was, you know, it didn't really. It went further than most people thought it would. I mean, then people started to say, well, Staten Island should become part of New Jersey. Right. <laughs> yeah. These things <laughs> are going to come up. And Queens and Brooklyn want to become formally part of Long Island and secede from New York City, from the five boroughs. You know, I've heard all these. I know. Yeah. We just have to take a collective breath as a state and say we're one state. And, uh, for and better or for worse. For better or for worse. That's and right. we're no all divorce. New Yorkers. There's no divorce. There's no divorce is going to be right. granted here. <laughs> 
and that should be our decree to the people. But we have to remember to serve these regions of the state, though. And if they're having issues in the southern tier, and they are yeah. a very poor region of the state, very rural, uh, we need to remember these areas of the state are suffering as an economy, and they may not have the robust economy of New York City and the revenues that are generated, and not to forget them. And that's sort of what's leading to the secession talks around, uh, around that region of the state. So when they're talking about secession and things like that, there's a regional problem, and the state should pay attention to it. Okay. All right, excellent. You're doing a great job over there, Stephen. Uh, I just met you. Mark knows you for over 25 years. But uh, hopefully that we continue talking sure. and checking into the Jewish view for the next 25 years with continued success <laughs> and good health. I wish so. Thank you so much. Much success. Yes. Thank you.